Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can set up the remote package installer to install your PS4 apps. That can be homebrew apps, games, DLC, updates, all of that stuff over the network connection instead of copying them to a USB drive. This will install the package files as it's downloading them, which is faster than transferring them with FTP. And on top of that, if you're already using the computer to jailbreak your PS4 anyway, then you'll already have an ethernet cable connected between your computer and your PS4, which means you can get really high transfer rates when copying over the package files. So this really makes a lot of sense, especially with the new jailbreak. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to get this set up. So first things first, I've ran the jailbreak already. So I do have my network set up still connected via PPPoE for the jailbreak. You can use, of course, Wi-Fi if you want, and it will work over Wi-Fi. It will just be slower transfer rates. But if you want the high speed transfer rates and you already have your computer and your PS4 connected with the Ethernet cable, I'm going to show you here how you can get it set up for using the remote package installer. So if we switch over to my computer and if we search on your search bar for ncpa.cpl and open that control panel item. And then from here, what we want to do is take our Ethernet adapter and we want to share the internet connection that the computer gets to the Ethernet adapter. So this is basically allowing the PS4 to piggyback off the computer's internet connection. There's two ways that you can do this. My preferred method is to right click on the adapter that's providing your computer with the internet connection, which in my case is this Wi-Fi adapter. So if I right click on it and go to properties, I can then go to sharing and then I can check the box to allow other users to connect through this internet connection. And then we can select a private network connection and I will select the ethernet adapter as the adapter I want to share the connection with. Now, you might not get a drop down menu here. If you only have one other adapter that it can share it with, then you will not get this menu option and you can just click OK and it will automatically share it with the Ethernet adapter. So we click OK here. If you get this message, I'm just going to say yes to it. And there it goes. It should now be shared. So if we refresh, we can see it is now shared. So it's sharing the Internet connection to the Ethernet adapter. Now, one issue with internet connection sharing is that sometimes when you reboot your computer, it will stop sharing the connection randomly and you'll have to go and disable connection sharing and re-enable it again. So that can happen quite often on Windows. And also another option is to use a network bridge instead of connection sharing, where you highlight your Wi-Fi adapter and your Ethernet adapter. You right click and you bridge connections, which creates a new adapter called a network bridge that will also allow your PS4 to connect through your computer's connection. But that can also have its own issues. So pick whichever one seems to work best for you. So from here, what I can do is go back on my PS4 and then all I need to do after I've ran the jailbreak with PPPoE, I can just set up an internet connection using LAN cable and then just choose easy instead of custom. And that will just use the internet connection sharing to get the internet connection on the PS4. And there we go. Internet settings updated. If I view connection status, you can see we have an IP address 192.168.137.207. Okay, there it is. So we are all set to install package files remotely on the PS4. So next, what we need to do is download the application that allows us to do this. We need to get the remote package installer. We can do this by using the homebrew store. If you don't have the homebrew store, then you will have to install it with a USB right now. Uh, but it's just one application. So basically, you go on pkg-zone.com. You download the homebrew store from there, put it on the root of a USB drive. And then once you have it on the USB, you can plug that into the PS4 and then use the gold hen package installer in the debug settings to install it onto the PS4. So from there, we can run our homebrew store. OK, and already here in the store app section, I can see the remote package installer. So if I press X and then scroll over to remote package installer, press X on it and then download and install this. So this is by the developer flats. So we're just going to get this installed. OK, you can now exit the homebrew store by pressing the options button and that will quit out of the homebrew store. And we now have the remote package installer. So all I need to do is run this with X. And while you're installing packages, you want to remain on the remote package installer. We're going to download this program here. So this is the PS4 remote package sender version two. There's a version available for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. 
uh, a bunch of different versions available. On Windows, I tend to download the standalone .exe file. Okay, so I've copied it over to my desktop here. I've also got a couple of package files to test with. So if we open up the remote package sender. Okay, so now that we have the program up and running, we're going to head over to the config section here. And we need to add a couple of things. So server IP address. We want to select the Ethernet port as the adapter that's uh, running the server because that's the adapter that the PS4 is plugged into. So that will give us the most direct connection between the PS4 and our computer. However, obviously, if you're using Wi-Fi, then you would just select the Wi-Fi adapter. But in my case, it's Ethernet. So I'm going to select Ethernet. And then from there, we should be able to click the refresh button here and it should say it's running. Now, there's kind of two ways that you can use this. You can, well, there's lots of ways you can use this, actually. But one of the ways is that you can just drag and drop package files directly into the program. And then, you know, it will allow you to send them. Or you can choose a location on your computer and it will list all of the package files that it finds in that location. So generally, I kind of like having this set up. So I'm going to enter the downloads location for my JDownloader downloads, which is the download manager I use to download all of my package files, and they all download into this folder. So just give it the like downloads folder on your computer where all of your package files are, and then click OK. And it's going to maybe take a while if you have a lot of package files in there. It needs to scan that directory to find all of the packages. So just give it a little bit of time. Then I also enable the scan subdirectories for package files so that if you have any package files in multiple folders inside that downloads folder, then it will also find those as well. So I would definitely recommend enabling that. And again, it will probably get frozen for a few seconds while it scans all of the subdirectories. And then we also have the queue scanner, which we can enable to automatically start the next install process in the queue. So I'll also turn that on. And then we need to enter the PS4's IP address into this box. So this part's obviously very important. Make sure you enter the IP address so we can test connection. And it should say that PS4 is accessible. If it doesn't, if you're on Wi-Fi, you might have to, you know, allow it in your firewall in order to allow the connection. But if you're doing it directly over a LAN cable, that shouldn't be a problem. So I just normally leave the update interval as default and the base timeout as default. Although if you're on Wi-Fi, you're probably going to want to crank those up to max. But if you're on a wired connection, I would just leave them as default. And then that should be it. It should be all ready to go. So if we head to our server settings here, you can see in my downloads location is detected all of the different package files that are in here. So all of these different package files, it's detected them all. And I can just click on one and basically serve that to the PS4. Or, of course, my other option is I can use dragged files. So I can just take any package files that I have. I can drag them into the program. And then I can just say yes to add all files. And that will add them in here. And then all I have to do is click add all to the queue. That will add them all into the queue. And then I can go to the processing center. And I can just click auto start, which will start the first one. And there it goes. It's now serving it over to my PS4, as you can see there. Added to downloads, PT. Uh, which shouldn't take too long. And the good thing about this as well is it gives you a percentage. So you can actually see how long it's taking here on the actual application itself. 100% done. And now it's switching to the next package file. So it's now installing Minecraft. And that should be done pretty soon because it's only 186 uh, megabytes. So you don't really even see the percentage. It just hit the install section straight away. And there we go. We've got PT ready to use. And there it is, Minecraft also ready to use. So that is essentially how it works right there. So 100%, 100%. And if we switch back over to our console, you'll see that both packages have been successfully installed. And I should be able to run them, no problem. We'll try Minecraft because it loads a lot faster. Just to get into the, to the game, make sure that it's transferred properly. And as you can see, it is. So there we go. Really, really simple, really easy to use once you have everything set up. And of course, let's do something a lot larger. So if I go to the base files where my downloads directory is, it's listed all of the package files here. So we've got Fallout 4 is the first one showing up here. That's 30 gigabytes. So I can just click the plus button to add that to the queue. If you wanted to add all of your package files that you have in your downloads section to the queue, you can just add all to queue here. And then you can choose which ones in the processing center you want to install, or you can just install them all. So I'm going to go ahead and just install this one to give you guys an idea of the speed over a wired connection. 30 gigabytes, a pretty large package file here. So we'll hit play. We're now installing. Switch over to our console. There it goes. Added to downloads, Fallout 4. 
and it's saying on the actual application itself it's going to take about four minutes four minutes to install 30 gigabytes which to be honest is not that bad well, fallout 4 has successfully installed there 30 gigabytes four and a half minutes not too long now there's a couple of other features that this has you can also enable the homebrew store tab in the settings and this will allow you to serve the package files from the homebrew store using the remote package installer you may have to increase the timeout for some of these because it's transferring them directly from the homebrew store server to your ps4 instead of from your computer directly to your ps4 so you may have to increase the timeout settings in the config if you are going to be to be doing this but we'll give it a try anyway just as is so we can take an application like ps4 explorer click the plus button to add it to the queue and we can then click play and it should transfer it so yeah we do get a timeout error on request however you can see it has actually been added to downloads and then we should get it installed i mean it will take longer to install because it is downloading it from the homebrew store server but it looks like it has been successfully installed there let's try and run our fallout 4 that we installed that was a 30 gigabyte game so took quite a while to install but you'll see that it is fully installed and it is running so there we go so that is the remote package installer for the ps4 i thought it was kind of worthwhile making a quick video on this because again you already have your ethernet cable connected between your computer and your ps4 to run the jailbreak for 11.0 then you know this is something you should definitely consider using because you already you already have the perfect network setup uh, already in order to get the fastest speeds with the remote package installer so hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful if you did please leave a like and subscribe and once again i'll hopefully see you guys in the next one